I really don't think anyone was expecting this news. Just yesterday, news dropped that Peter Jackson is returning to Middle Earth. He's on board to produce a brand new Lord of the Rings film. Now, it isn't only Jackson returning, but also Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens are going to be co-writing the screenplay. The working title for the film is The Lord of the Rings, The Hunt for Gollum, and directing and starring is none other than Andy Serkis. The film will be executive produced by Ken Kamins with Circus and the Imaginarium's Jonathan Cavendish. Now, I'm gonna get into my thoughts on a Gollum movie, but first, right off the bat, I wanna give you all of the details. Uh, so, the, the Hunt for Gollum is set to release in 2026. I would guess it's probably gonna release in December 2026 because of all the other movies releasing in December. Now, this is also going to mark the 25th anniversary of The Fellowship of the Ring. Also, we have confirmation this is the first of two new Lord of the Rings movies, so we don't have any idea what the second movie is going to be about. I don't think it's going to be a sequel to this Gollum movie. I think it's probably going to be something completely different. Maybe it's going to follow Aragorn and Arwen. That's what I would like to see. Now, the project is currently in the early stages of script development, with writers Walsh and Boyens, along with Phoebe Gittins and Artie Papa Giorgio, who are also the screenwriters for the upcoming animated film film The Lord of the Rings The War of the Rohirrim, which if you don't know is releasing on December 13th of this year. I am so excited for that. And this animated movie is set 200 years before the events of The Hobbit, uh, and you can find that story in the appendices of The Lord of the Rings. Honestly, I'm just so excited to finally have another animated adaptation of Middle Earth, and I'm hoping we'll get more of that. Well, as long as this one does good, I'm actually pretty optimistic about it, much more optimistic than I was with the rings of power but you have not seen what i've seen i have seen my share you have not seen what i have seen i have seen my share you have not I have you have not seen what I've seen. You have not seen. Now, Jackson, Walsh, and Boyens added that it's an honor and a privilege to travel back to Middle Earth with our good friend and collaborator, Andy Serkis, who has unfinished business with that stinker Gollum. As lifelong fans of Professor Tolkien's vast mythology, we are proud to be working with Mike DeLuca, Pam Abdi, and the entire team at Warner Bros. on another epic adventure. And then Serkis goes on to reply in his Gollum impression, which I, I can't do, so I can't really read that, uh, but some important details that he drops here is he mentions uh, Weta and he mentions his filmmaking family in New Zealand. So are they going to be filming in New Zealand again? Because that's going to be amazing. And also having uh, Weta Workshop and Weta Effects working on Gollum and all the all the digital and practical effects for this movie, that's actually really promising. I'm, I'm really happy that he dropped that little bit of information there. In my opinion, Peter Jackson is the only one that can save this franchise from the hands of Amazon, and I am much more confident in this movie than I am with any of the garbage that's coming from Amazon. I feel like having him involved and Andy Serkis and all the screenwriters and producers that are listed here, they have all the right people here to make something amazing, but is a Gollum movie the right decision. I mean, we all saw how the Gollum video game turned out. Listen, I can think of a number of Middle Earth stories they can do for the next entry in the franchise. A Gollum adaptation is absolutely not one of them. It clearly wasn't the right move for a video game, and I don't really think it's a movie we need either. We've, we already have the backstory to Gollum in the original movie. So my initial opinion to all this news is that I don't think this is needed. And again, I still feel that way, but after seeing how many people are involved in this, this, I, I am, I can't help myself but get a little bit excited. And to be fair here, Warner Bros. does not own the rights to the Silmarillion. They, that belongs to the Tolkien's estate. So we're not going to see a Baron and Luthien adaptation. We're not going to see the Fall of Gondor or the Children of Hurin or any of those stories as much as I would love to see them. A lot of people don't seem to realize that. I'm, I'm always seeing people say, why don't they just make a Baron and Luthien adaptation? They can't. They don't have the rights to that. Warner Bros. does have the rights to The Hobbit 
Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and the appendices which come after The Lord of the Rings. And if you don't know, the appendices have a lot of incredible stories within them. If you're going to read one story from the appendices, then you have to read the tale of Aragorn and Arwen. In my opinion, this is the best of the appendices, and it's what I would love to see adapted. And maybe, just maybe, we will see that with the second movie that they're working on, who knows? But I gotta say, a Gollum movie is just not really what I was expecting. Uh, but there is some promise here. I do think we kind of know what it's going to cover. It's going to cover that period of time uh, when Gandalf was starting to clue in on Bilbo's ring, realizing that it might be the One Ring. So then he sends Aragorn to go track down and capture Gollum. So I mean, there could actually be a lot going on here in this story. Now I do want to mention that a British fan-made movie with the same name name, The Hunt for Gollum, was made back in 2009. It was a 39 minute film that covered that exact story, and presumably this is going to be the story of the new feature film. And here we see Aragorn go on a series of adventures, he traps and then loses Gollum, and he gets attacked by orcs and ringwraiths. Gollum's recaptured by the elves of Mirkwood, and he's interrogated by Gandalf. So really, this fan film and what's written in the appendices gives us a good idea of what this new movie is is going to cover. Now, if you haven't seen the fan film, I'm actually going to link it in the description. You can watch it here on YouTube. Uh, you can tell it is made by true Tolkien fans, and I highly, highly recommend checking it out. So even if this is covering a topic that I wouldn't prefer for an adaptation, uh, just knowing that Andy Serkis is taking a central role in this project gives me enough confidence that it's going to be done well. And that honestly kind of sways my opinion a bit. Originally, I was very skeptical when I saw this news drop, but I don't know. I think this could end up being really good. Now, we're likely going to see some returning characters here. We're going to see Gandalf, Aragorn, obviously Gollum, uh, but there is a chance we could see Galadriel, Arwen. We could even see Legolas. And let me know what other characters you think we could see in this adaptation. Now, Gandalf once said, I looked everywhere for the creature Gollum, but the enemy found him first. So this makes me wonder if this is going to follow a double hunt type of narrative, where it alternates between Aragorn and the Nazgul hunting Gollum. Honestly, this has the potential to be very dark. It could really focus in on the corruptive power of the ring, uh, transforming Smeagol into Gollum, and it could even include his encounter with Shelob. Now, I've even seen some people wanting them to bring back Vigo to be Aragorn. Now, I don't really think that's going to happen. Uh, yes, they could use CG to make him appear younger because, I mean, he has aged quite a bit since the original films. They could do that. Maybe they could pull it off, but it would probably be pretty expensive. And I imagine they're going to be using CG for a lot of other stuff. I don't think that's going to happen, and I am not against uh, recasting for a younger Aragorn. I think that would probably be the better option, actually, but let me know what you think. Now, a lot of people forget that the Hobbit films were very rushed. I mean, when Guillermo del Toro dropped out and Peter Jackson had to take over, he had very limited time to work on those films as opposed to when he worked on The Lord of the Rings, because Warner Bros. wanted them out at a specific date. I believe that this time, Peter Jackson and his writing team are going to have a lot of good input, and they're gonna have more time. And obviously, Andy Serkis is just an incredible actor, and he's honing his skills as a director. We also know that Warner Bros. is under new management, so I'm pretty confident that they can turn this into what it's meant to be. I believe this has some potential to revive the franchise a bit after what Amazon has done. Also, just imagine if Howard Leslie Shore returns to make the beautiful orchestral musical score for this movie. That is truly the dream. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know what you think in the comments because I'm kind of mixed on this. On one hand, a Gollum movie is kind of the last thing I wanted, to be honest. But since there's so many people involved who worked on the original movies, Peter Jackson, Andy Serkis, all the others that I mentioned, uh, this is going to be big. So yeah, that does, that does make me excited about it. So let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. Also, if you have any speculation for what the second movie is going to be about, 
let me know. Again, I'm really hoping it's going to be following Aragorn and uh, Arwen, especially if they are going to recast for a younger Aragorn, it would just make sense to also include him in the second movie. That is it for this video. If you want to stay updated, make sure to subscribe and like the video. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support the channel, then make sure to check out my Patreon or become a channel member. Huge thank you to all my patrons and my channel members, and I'll see you soon.